what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of B is for Build. In today's episode, we are working on the R69 GTR. Specifically, we're moving on to the interior. So we gotta get the whole interior back in the car, but we have to shorten the interior by 4.75 inches because that's how much we shorten the car by. So that, there's gonna be some creative work in there as well. And anytime you do a body swap, you gotta do some sort of a roll bar hoop support to make sure that your roof body doesn't cave in from the bottom side of the body. So we'll be doing a half cage, uh, the full interior, and then, uh, like I said, we're also going to be addressing the uh, flush mounting of the body kit. How to get that thing like smoothed out so it looks like it was an OEM body panel. That's what's in store for today's episode. Stay tuned. Before we get down to work, I want to take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Zanga Poker. Some of you guys might remember, I actually used to be a professional poker player. I played professionally for four years. Uh, I just met with one of my roommate, my old roommates in Vegas, and he just won uh, over a million bucks in a tournament, which is really cool to hear. They're still playing professionally. Uh, I obviously went a different direction with BS for Build here, but anyways, I still love playing poker, and Zanga Poker is a great app to do that on. You can see here I've managed to grind up a little bit over two billion chips in the game. I'm pretty proud of that. And it's free to play. It's available on iOS, Android, and web, so you can pretty much play it anywhere you are. It's a great game to bust out and just play on a break. And Zenga Poker just launched a new feature called Leagues World Champions. It's rolling out this month, and the most ambitious players are going to go head-to-head -head and complete for a spot in the new Grand Champion leaderboard and gain the title of being one of the game's top players. In Leagues World Champions, the players will win their way through five different divisions where they got to compete weekly to level up through a points-based system. And as you win more hands, you're going to advance through each division with the goal of earning the coveted spot of the Grand Champion leaderboard. A new live feature shows the rankings in real time and features the top 500 players for everyone to see. And with each new victory, you'll be rewarded with exclusive perks like lucky bonus spins and prize chests and the top 500 players are going to receive a special badge that you can proudly display at the poker table. So guys go check it out right now the link is in the top of the description people that use my link will get three million chips for free to get started with that'll be a huge boost on your way to the championship how cool would it be to be number one I'm gonna go try I hope you guys do too again the link is at the top of the description go check it out huge thanks to Zango Poker for sponsoring this part of the episode let's get down to work <laughs> Getting started, Oscar the Great Fabricator is working on connecting the last little finishing point of the outer shell to the, the inner body. So we got this wheel well area right here. We need to go ahead and weld those two things together. So we got a, uh, a bridge strip that's being welded in there and then we're going to seam seal all of this stuff. So everywhere where you see all these little tacks and pieces of metal, they get seam sealer over them. So everything's like waterproof and, and really nice airtight and everything like that has got to get applied. So they're going to be working on that. I'm going to be working on the flush mount of the body kit. So what I'm calling flush mounting is basically smoothing this body kit piece into the original body. There's a couple main areas that I need to address. The edges, the body kit, you can kind of see it's got a step down and then the step into the original corner. The body kit didn't make a complete uh, point here, so we have to fill that in and make a nice hard edge that looks like OEM. Then we have the spot up here by the C-pillar. This all has to get filled in and then smoothed out, so it's a nice gradual transition up through there. And then also in our door opening, we have a little bit of that double edge happening as well. So we gotta redo that. Now to do these things, first thing you gotta do is sand through the OEM paint, make sure you have a nice scuffed up surface that your different fillers can attach to. So I'll be scuffing up this rail through here and through there. And then um, what I'm gonna start with is fiberglass reinforced body filler. Something nice, strong, durable, and, and pretty hardcore. Although we don't need to do a lot of buildup, it's a very, very tiny amount. I wanna use that as my base. So that's what I'm gonna be uh, laying into here. So I'll scuff this, scuff this, lay it in through here, through here, and all around my door on both sides. Right, that was pretty quick and easy. So we use the fiberglass to fill our holes that we had for our Clico pins and then do some build up. So corners are super, super easy to sand. So I go a little overboard 
on uh, the corners. When I move into these gaps here, I'm not gonna go overboard. They get a lot harder to sand these transition points. So that's good. While that's drying up, uh, we're gonna move on over here. What, what I'm gonna do is cut a template for some sort of a scraper so I could scrape a, a bend into this, a nice radius that's consistent all the way through here. Um, since this is kind of a panel that's coming in through here, I think it would look best with a really consistent radius. So I'll cut something out of probably something like plastic, maybe a, I'll probably just grab one of those paint spreaders that we have, the, the, the body filler spreaders, the yellow one, cut the radius out of it that I want to see in this panel right here. And then again, I'm going to mix up the uh, fiberglass reinforced body filler, sand all this up, stuff up. So we're going to have good adhesion. And then I'll, I'll go ahead and apply a bunch and then spread it uniformly all the way across here. And then as we get into this part, then we have to change our transition method because it goes basically from flat to a little bit of a bend to the curve. Got our fiberglass reinforced body filler coming in here and we got a nice curve. I was able to just use the back of one of the uh, mixing discs and get the, the right curve that I wanted. And you guys probably saw me like you got to glob, you can glob this stuff on there, but then you got to work it in, work it in. So it has a good contact with both of the uh, pieces and everything like that. If you make a mistake and it gets an air bubble underneath, you're going to get something like that. A little hard to focus on, but uh, yeah, that's like a, uh, that's where I didn't work it in well enough because I started rushing when I got over here. Uh, so that's, I mean, easy. I can body fill that in, but that's what happens. So you got to work it in really, really well and then smooth it out. So overall though, we've got this transition going pretty well. Once that hardens up all the way, I can start to sand it smoother and get ready for, for body fill. But you can see that I, I'm, I'm very happy with the way that we got this transition with this curve and then the transitioning into flat here is gonna look really good. So I'm gonna move on to the last little piece which is the uh, inside of the door here, just getting this ridge so it's nice and smooth. Um, again, getting through, oh yeah, you guys saw me work on sanding through all of this. This red paint's real bad, real bad. It's got some serious problems in it so gotta sand off all the red paint before we get anything on there. So I'll be doing that in here as well, sanding this all the way down and then filling this with the fiberglass as well. While I'm doing that, the guys are going to move on to working out the body panel situation, like filling in this guy. You can see they've already started working on filling in that guy and uh, working our way towards the back seat. Got the last round of fiberglassing in there. We'll be sanding all this up pretty quickly as soon as it hardens up enough. Moving on to the interior work. Lots and lots of time has been spent in here trying to get this dialed in in the back. Um, so we got R34 paneling, R34 roof, R34 side, and then we're at R35 in the middle here and here and here. You can see right along there is the only point that's that's visible and not looking great and uh, we've got an idea with working with some foam and some felt where hopefully we're going to be able to cover that up with like a nice felt backing and make it kind of fit in so we are you know we're just hoping that that's gonna let me show you from another angle. So it's just really that one thing right there. And we're thinking if we kind of cover it up with felt that it'll honestly kind of disappear. It'll be black and you know, I don't think it would be a problem. So we're working on the rear deck now. And this is uh, so high off because of our speakers. Speakers are right there. Uh, it keeps this up really high. And then we've been test fitting the rear windshield and it just will not uh, go in because of speakers. So we're gonna try and flip these speakers upside down and actually install them from the bottom pointing up. See if we can do that. Don't 
don't mind all the smudges. So with the modification that we made, just getting a little creative with the speaker there, it's going from up mount to top, anyway, you know, under mounting. Uh, we got it all to fit pretty nicely. This window's happy where it is at. We're gonna have to do a plug here. There's a rear windshield wiper that goes on most of these things. It's probably like some JDM law that you gotta have one or something. Uh, so we are gonna be doing a delete on that. Uh, and you can't really see where the carpet ends because of the amount of tint that we have, but um, you can kind of, gosh, you really can't see on camera. With the, with the human eye, you can barely see a little bit of a transition, but once we paint this black back here, you won't be able to see it at all. So we probably won't even um, worry about felting that back part, but we will uh, be doing some work in the back corner over there. We took the, we took the seat out, but that back corner needs a little bit of work, but that's uh, overall, that is the back wrapped up. So now we need to start looking at the carpet and the center console and uh, wiring, wiring. All the looms. All the looms, the wiring looms, and then um, I, need to st I need to get into sanding. So I'm gonna be jumping into sanding this. Uh, one little trick I got for radiuses. When you're sanding a radius like this and you wanna keep it nice and uniform, I'm not sure if this is the exact size that we need, but yeah, so you can see this is a little too small. I just walk around my shop looking at different round things that I have until I find the right radius, and I wrap that in sandpaper and use that so to, to sand all the way around. That way it's one uniform exact curve that I'm sanding into this, and it ends up looking really, really good. Uh, I've tried just using sanding blocks and kind of bending them with my hand, but as the shape changes, it's you'll just keep digging in and in and in and further, and you won't really know where to stop. So. Yeah, find a nice uh, a nice round tool that matches the radius, sand that down, and then I'm probably gonna use a power sander to kind of just start to level this out and flatten this part out here too. I got the fiberglass sanded up. I was able to use the power sander on, on these edges. You never want to do it on like the actual radius of the corner, but just the flat here and the flat here. I was able to use it. And you can see all the low spots. With the fiberglass, you're not really meant to try and hit it exactly. This is just building a really good foundation so you can use a tiny bit of body filler to, to finish it out. Here, uh, you can see that this, like, this black stuff, that's a little bit of guide coat. Because I was sanding, I couldn't really see the high spots, so I just used a little bit of black spray paint as a guide coat, sand again, and then you could see See where you're low. For my radius, I found a truly can was exactly the right radius that I wanted um, for this arch right here. And once you start to get a hard line at the bottom and a hard line at the top, and then you're not really standing in this anymore, you're done. You need to add more body filler. So the fiberglass uh, part of this section is done, and then the door. Uh, edge actually came out really really nice so that's going to be a very small amount of body filler and that'll probably finish up first with the fewest amount of finish passes so now it's a lightweight body filler to finish past this stuff in um, we are getting ready to call it a night though um, so oscar's got a lot of the wiring done but we want to do another really fun job uh, before we get out of here and that is to change the color of this headliner. So this headliner is the gray color because I think this was originally a gray car and they had a gray headliner and probably gray interior. We want this thing to be black to match the rest of the black interior and, and we can make that happen. We're gonna make that black too. Vinyl fabric paint is a thing, especially in lo in like low use areas. Like you shouldn't be really messing with your headliner too much. This will actually work very well. Oscar tried it on his truck and it worked. Seats aren't the best, <laughs> aren't the best he says, but it, it does work and uh, it's going to work well on this headliner. So what we're going to do is pull the gray pieces off. We'll mask them up and spray those with, wow, you really can't see, sorry. There we go. We'll pull that and that off, mask them up and paint those with actual paint. And then we will spray the rest of this headliner, clean it up real quick, vacuum it, spray it with this uh, headliner paint and we'll have a black headliner. It seemed a little crazy to me at first to be painting fabric, but that's like how they screen print t-shirts and stuff like that. And hey, it's meant for it. Plus this is Beast for Build where we try weird things and we learn from them. And if it doesn't work, we will tell you when I'm asking everybody if they know where I can buy a black 
R34 headliner from Japan. No, I actually think this will work just fine. We're back for another day and the headliner looks fantastic. This painting idea was a really good idea. That is awesome. So we're gonna be reinstalling that back in the car shortly. Uh, Oscar jumped onto the carpets. So the deal with the carpets is since we shortened the car 4.75 inches, uh, the carpets were gonna be 4.75 long. We're gonna make a cut, well we did make the cut already, underneath the seat so the two carpet pieces will overlap underneath the seat. You'll never know anything different happened. Uh, you can see that also because we remove some of the width out of the car. The carpet looks a little bit long, so we're gonna be trimming a little bit of these edges. We came up with a really great strategy that I'm excited to see how it works, uh, to attach that to the side rail, and then I got these awesome carbon fiber um, trim pieces, the, uh, like your kick panel trim piece, uh, they're here too and they're gonna look really amazing. So we're gonna keep going forward. Uh, this carpet goes all the way up to the back and then there's some foam that goes here in the back. We'll get all that uh, built in there so we can get the carpeting done. Oh, and while Oscar's working on that, I'm gonna do the next step on the uh, flush mounting the body kit, which is the body filler. So I'm gonna be doing a coat of body filler across everywhere that has low spots, so every single spot. Got our nice little lightweight body filler in here and uh, I'm gonna start sanding on this. It's almost almost dry. So that's pretty much the right, like how you do the flush mounting of one of these panels, how you finish it off after you do your panel bonding. Um, it's a lot of just sanding, attention to detail. Remember to keep the same radius edge that, as you're sanding through it. Sand it, if you have low spots, add more body filler, sand it again. If it's, it's gonna be as good as the amount of time that you put into it, really. And just have a good attention to detail. And it will look totally flush and awesome. So we're gonna focus now on the rest of the interior. We have to build some sort of a roof support in the event of a rollover. So if this car rolls over, since the body is welded onto another body, we just wanna have that that backup roof support. And we have to build a pretty unique cage because of the way that the seats fit in here and the seating position for this car to be comfortable, we can't run a standard bar on the B pillar because then it would be like right in front of my head here. And if I got an accident, I would slam my head into the bar. So it has to run behind, so triangles are strong. We're gonna basically build a triangle that goes up here and down there, and that's gonna be it. So it's gonna be the same structure as any half cage, but it's gonna be at a different kind of angle. It doesn't matter as long as you have a nice support both ways and that that bar goes over the back of your head, that will support the roof in the event of an accident. Honestly, I think this car would be totally fine in the event of an accident, but better safe than sorry. So Oscar's gonna go ahead and finish up the measurements. And uh, we're gonna, uh, he's got the angle finder in there. We're gonna bend up um, some, we're gonna use 175 DOM tubing. So that's like race spec tubing and get that main bar and the two support bars uh, welded in there. I said I was done talking about this, but I lied. Didn't go over glazing putty. If you get the shape that you want and you have tiny little pinholes or little low spots, you don't want to fill something as large as the lightweight body filler, glazing putty is really good. I apply it with a razor blade, extremely thin to just fill in those little holes. So when you see me sand this down, it'll just look like little yellow spots where there was low spots. And then I'm done with this. So that's all good. Kyle and I are moving. Oscar's gonna continue on the roll cage. Once we get it into the car, we'll actually show you some stuff. Kyle and I are now moving on to a big, Big, big worry point for me, which is the dashboard. How are we gonna make this look good? We're definitely gonna have to trim it down because the R34 is a lot less wide than the R35. So we're gonna have to cut into our dashboard a little bit, bring it in, and then hopefully we can, uh, I'm thinking we're gonna be 3D printing something uh, to cap it off and not make it look ugly. So we're gonna do a lot of measuring and one cut and hopefully not ruin our R35 GTR dash. Well, that did not take long. Uh, we put it in here for some measurements. We got our measurements of what we need to do, and then we were uh, test fitting the door and shutting the door, and we realized something very, very important that we didn't realize before. This dash sticks out so much further than in the R34 that the door 
panel and the door handle part really don't play nicely. Like the dash comes out so far, imagine if your dash was all the way out to here. So when your door's shut, you can't operate the door handle. We've looked at different ways to do this. I mean, we could cut up the dash and make it skinnier and different things like that, but it would look terrible. I think that there's a small chance that we could actually have the dash look great and build custom door panels, door panel inserts. And so this is called a door card. And uh, the only ones I've seen online, they don't make any like really nice flat ones. On our Datsun build, we had these really, really nice flat ones and it allowed us to have a lot more space. So we wanna see what's underneath this, what's behind this, and if we can gain ourselves any more space for our dashboard to maybe not even need to be cut. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the door cards from both sides and start to look at how much space that gains us. I'm very, very happy to say that we found a happy medium. It is gonna require a little bit more work than we had planned on doing. So some of it's not gonna get done in this episode, but it will get done and it'll make this vehicle so much better. So you can see that we have the dash fitting now inside the vehicle as it's supposed to. It sticks out a little bit more than it used to. So the door needs to be able to receive that, which means we have to build a door card. We can't have the old door panel that comes like, the old door panel comes way out to here. So we're gonna build our own door card in another episode. A door card is basically normally made out of aluminum. And what we need to do is be able to make two tight bends, one bend right here going this way and then another bend going Going down so if there's any place in the Portland metro area that can bend that that sheet aluminum for us and do a relatively tight bend um, so one coming up over and then back down to do our whole door card uh, let me know because we're looking for a place that can make that bend um, and then we will that'll basically be flat we're gonna relocate the handles back to about here and uh, it'll be pretty cool and I think we'll, and then we're gonna have a, a handle on there. And I think we'll just start with gloss black and then we can maybe change the color or a lot of people sticker bomb them. We could sticker bomb it too if we wanted to do that. So then once we have a door card here, we can build our own uh, thing that comes off here and connects up with our dash perfectly. It'll look very, very clean and it'll be like a nice, nice made up and we don't lose any functionality of our dashboard. So everything stays working and it'll be great. So that is the game plan for that. And we're gonna save that for when we can have a machine shop bend these uh, door cards for us. So we're gonna get the back all finished out because we have all the stuff to do that right now. The main hoop for the roll cage is bent. So we're gonna go ahead and get all the body paneling in that we need to, interior paneling in that we need to, and uh, throw that main hoop in here, get it tacked in and tack in some supports. Our half cage is fully installed. It looks amazing. It basically kind of looks like from, from a design aspect, it looks like a half cage like flipped around backwards. There's a really good reason for that. Um, basically what it is is the driver's seat goes to right about here, which is where it backs up, and then it leans, and it leans backwards this way. Ends up with your head being around there. So if we had the standard where the main hoop follows the B pillar, what you would get is a bar right above your head or possibly in front of your head, which would be very, very dangerous. The goal for this is to hold up the roof in the case of an accident, and this will do it very, very well. And then this also allows us to be able to lean back the maximum amount that we would ever need to. A lot more than we'd ever need to. Obviously your driver's seat wouldn't lean back that much. It looks phenomenal. Uh, Oscar did a fantastic job fabricating all this and welding it in and it's really, really cool. So now we're gonna go ahead and throw the rest of our rear interior in. The biggest thing is gonna be that that seat, the R35 seat, does not wanna have a uh, roll cage right here. So we're gonna have to like kinda hammer that thing around and modify it a little bit. I don't think it'll be a big problem and we'll get everything in here and show you how it looks as a package.
All right, guys, it's not quite too late in the morning, and we got the interior in. Now, obviously, like we kind of kind of had to make a stop point right about here. As we go forward, we're gonna do door cards, like I said before, install the rest of the dash, everything should be good. This looks phenomenal. So we did the felt in the corners there, filling in that gap right there. Also a little bit of roll cage action fills in the rest of the gap. And um, that looks a little bit more shiny because we put some leather treatment on all this stuff. Headliner will come in right after this. You're gonna see all of this in the next episode, but we made the back work we figured out the back. I feel like we figured out the front as well as as far as making out the space. We just kind of ran a little bit low on time. We didn't want this to be a two week long episode. So this is as far as we got. I think we're setting the standard pretty high for an R69. Like really like the next person that has to build an R69. It's, you know, we're showing them how to do it, but it's still, it's, uh, Gonna take a little bit of work. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, in the next week, I have to start my medical treatment, so I'm not sure how much of a delay there's gonna be. I don't know if I mentioned, but I had to go to the doctor five times while we were filming this episode, so uh, I'm sorry about the timing and the spacing out of everything, but it is just what we have to deal with right now, so I hope you guys can understand that. And uh, we'll hit you back with another episode as soon as we possibly can. Hopefully in a week. We'll see, maybe less. I got something special up my sleeve. All right, I'll see you guys very soon. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate the hell out of all you guys, and we'll see you very, very soon. Peace!